Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. I wanted to make a video on um, IPOs. Um, I get I get a few questions about these and kind of like my opinions on it, what I think. Um, more recently, obviously, Snap being a popular topic um, in the IPO market. Um, I'm just going to say off top, I don't typically invest in IPOs. Uh, the reason being is... It is on the much riskier end. Now, of course, I mean, like, I trade penny stocks, obviously. Like, I, I, I trade risk. But um, those penny stocks that I trade have history. You know, I could I could look at their history and see what their earnings are like. I could see how the chart has been. You know, I could, I could see all that information. When you trade an IPO, there is zero information that you're essentially trading on. You're trading on hype, you know. When the buildup to Snap was happening, like, the price of the, uh, of the stock that people anticipated was hyped the uh the number of uh users was hyped you know the the service was hyped and all this so there's all that hype right and it excites people which is fine you know like that's that's the whole point of it you know snap wants people to buy their shares obviously but when this thing came out it had that typical like initial hype up where like as soon as it came out like it started at 24 and then jumped up here at 27 and then just pretty much has been going down since. Now, it's less than a month. So obviously I can't say, oh, this is a failing stock or, oh, this stock's going to be great, whatever. It's less than a month, you know, give it time. But right now it's looking pretty bleak, I'll admit. Now, if you if you took the time and effort to buy into this IPO, understand that, or I, I should say, um, do you understand for one, are you buying this on a buy and hold strategy for long term or are you doing it for a quick trade? If you're doing it for a quick trade, there's probably not a good time to really buy because it's still, like I said, it's too new. It's too unsure. If you're buying and hold long term and you bought and it kind of went up here, I mean, yeah, you, you, you're losing some money right now. But if, if you think Snap's going to be that company, you know, that's going to continue to grow, continue to be successful, then, I mean, you just have to you have to ride it out. You know, you have to hold on to it. Like Facebook, when it started out, you know, it didn't do that great. And uh, now it's like psh, like the biggest company, or it's one of the biggest uh, internet companies there is. But, um, and like I personally, like I want to buy Facebook. Like I'm waiting for the share price to come down because right now it's it's like at all-time highs. And I, I, I told you guys in other videos, you know, I don't like buying at all-time highs. You know, I don't, I don't like to overpay for stuff. I'm cheap like that. So you see where it, right where it is right now, it's it's all the way up here. So I'm waiting for that one to come down. But Facebook owns Instagram and Instagram rips off uh, off of uh, Snapchat and it advertises it better than Snapchat. So that's kind of the reason why like I'm just going to stick with Facebook because basically Instagram and Snapchat are the same thing. You know, like you can make whatever argument you want. That's fine. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to get into that debate with y'all, but it's basically the same service. And now Facebook is even going as far as to adding to their messaging service. That's also a very successful uh, app to add more things that uh, Snapchat does as well. So pretty much Snapchat is a, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say like giving away its, uh, its innovation and its secrets. But I mean like Facebook, they're just so damn good at like monetizing everything and you know they'll they'll rip right like Zuckerberg don't give a fuck he'll he'll rip right off of what he thinks is a good uh, deal or whatever and he'll and he'll capitalize on it and and he does that so well the company does that so well so that's why like I'm I'm uninterested in Snapchat I'm I'm really uninterested in IPOs I remember when um man what was the car company I know it's not Ferrari there I don't know there's a recent uh, car company IPO that came out but it was like the same thing you know it was hyped up a little bit. And, um, I think it's race. Is it race? Okay, it was Ferrari. I was right. So, this only came out, uh, November 30th, right? So, and, and look, and look at it when it came out. First one it came out, boom, dropped, right? Dropped all the way to 33. It started at 46, all the way down to 33. Now, but look at it. It's it's gone all the way up. You know, it's it's recovered. But that initial drop, that's what I'm talking about. That's where people lose interest. They get they get so hyped and then it comes out and then just boom, right? It goes right to the bottom. Now, obviously comparing Ferrari to Snap is 
you know, apples to oranges, but like it it's the same thing. It's like a popular IPO. Everyone hyped it up. And then like, you know, as soon as it came out, it had like a little rise maybe, and then it just dropped. In this case, it just straight dropped. But if you're in it for the long run, like hopefully whoever bought it right here at, you know, 33 bucks, I mean, they're, they're making bank because their profit doubled in basically one year, you know? So that's, that's, that was a smart move on their part. That's if, you know, they bought and hold it. But it's it's one of those things, you know, where they just hype it up and then, you know, it doesn't meet expectations or, you know, something happens, bad press, whatever. And then it, uh, it loses everything. And then Square was like another one. And Square, as you can see here on this graph, it got a little crazy in the beginning. It started at 1120 and then it jumped up and then it spiked down. And then it jumped all the way up and then it spiked down. And now that it's back on a run up. So, like, it's just, like, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, IPOs, like, in the beginning, like, you have no history on this stock. You have nothing to gauge. You have nothing to compare it with. So, it's always very volatile. So, if you're really into IPOs, like, I would definitely suggest researching it for one and also uh, buy it on a long-term strategy, you know, because don't, I mean, to buy it for, like, a quick turnaround profits, like, it's it's really risky. You know, you have nothing to, you have nothing to base your your assumptions on you know so that's that's why i don't buy ipos i like to buy what i know you know i like to, and i was and that was and that's kind of highlighting actually in my previous video where i was talking about or i was showing you guys my audible app and like the different books i read uh that book uh peter lynch did uh uh went up on wall street i believe uh, one of the things he talks about is what made him successful is he bought what he knew he didn't buy stuff he didn't understand you know he didn't buy uh the hot IPOs and all that. He like he's like, oh, this is a store in my neighborhood. It's very popular. People love coming here, and it trades on the stock market. I'm gonna buy it, you know, because like I know this store. Like I go to this store, you know. He he has research on it. He has history on it. That's that's how he was successful. You know, it's that it's that kind of mentality that I try to follow. I'm not saying if you buy IPOs, you're doing it wrong. Not not by any means. I'm just saying for me personally, I don't like to buy IPOs. If you like to buy IPOs, I mean, it's all good. You 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 do whatever you think is right. But it's it's always it's always risky in the beginning, especially in the beginning, because like people just you don't know where it's going until you get those earnings reports, and you need to see consecutive growth. You know, you need to see consecutive earnings. You need to see consecutive gains, um, before someone like me would would get involved in it. But maybe that means I miss out in the beginning. But I mean, like, oh well, you know, there's always going to be a hot IPO. There's always going to be new stocks. Stocks are always going to, you know, break out to new highs and all that. That's that's just part of it. But having um, that initial that initial buy where you just, you know, you get so hyped up on it, you're like, I have to buy it right away. Like, don't don't buy it just because of that hype. You know, buy it for a purpose. Buy it because you know that this company is going to do well. Now. Square, as far as competition, I believe only really has PayPal and then um, a couple like uh, card services like phone app services that uh, do uh, their service or that also uh, pay through their phone. So it has competition, but if it continues to succeed like it has at least on this chart and earnings have been kind of back and forth like on Q1 it missed, Q2 it, it, it rose, Q3 it missed, and then Q4 it rose. So it's going back and forth, you know. It's not quite showing consistent gains yet. And then if you go to race, go back to that Ferrari one, we'll see on the past four quarters it beat on all of them. And I can tell you right now, being a more not not a very recent IPO but like about a year old or so and it had four four growths in a row like I'd be interested in buying this now that it has a history now that I could look at the past now that I could look at earnings reports you know now that I could I could look at what this company is actually worth now I'd be interested in buying it now the PE is 28 and um, I've talked in other videos where I don't really like buying unless the PE is around like 15 or so so I mean, like, I'm not gonna buy this at least not at 66 bucks. You know, I'd probably wait for it to to come down to like 50 here, like around this level, before I'd buy it. But I'd be more interested in buying this, you know. And then, um, and then you know, of course, you go to Snap, and you know, it has nothing out yet, so it has no earnings, no market cap. You don't even know. You don't even know the PE ratio. You don't even know the div. You know, you don't know a whole lot about this stock, so it's it's difficult to gauge. 
So if if you're if you're into the IPO game, I mean, like you know, what I'm saying like go for it, but just you know, always understand the the risk that that is. You know, the the risk of of like some bad press happening with that company early on, and then just the stock just tanks from it. You know, because it has nothing to back it up. There's nothing to support it. It hasn't even had an earnings report yet, so you, you can't even really understand what the company is worth. But um, I'm I like I myself like I still keep eyes on it, you know. Like I'm gonna keep an eye on Snap. I'm gonna listen to the, I'm gonna listen to the earnings report. I'm gonna follow up on it, and then one day, like maybe a year from now, if it has two or three quarterly earnings in a row, and it seems like it can consistently make gains, maybe I'll consider buying it. But in the meantime, like I'm gonna stick with Facebook just because Facebook's a giant, you know. It's it's always gonna continue going up. At least that's how I see it. They make good acquisitions, you know. They have a good product. They have close to two billion users, and all those all those Facebook accounts are monetized. So ad revenue comes in. Just, it just it just seems like such a good profit making company that that's why I'm interested in it. But if Snapchat becomes that one day, you know, then then that'll be good. But maybe Snapchat will, will go broke or get, go really cheap, and then Facebook will just buy it up, and then it'll just be another another company that Facebook bought that it can it can maximize the profits from. But um, anyway, I I wanted to uh, to touch on that because I begin I got a couple questions about Snap and like the IPOs and stuff, so I wanted to try to make a video on that. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, and like I said, if you if you gain money on it, cool. If you lost money on it, you know, just like you know, you got to check yourself. Like, what are you gonna do with it? You're gonna you're gonna write it out, or you're just gonna cut your losses and move on? You know, you do. It's it's a hard decision to make because it's you it's you and your money. You know, no one else can tell you how to spend it. So you always gotta. You always got to hold yourself accountable. You know, you can't you can't point the finger at someone else. You know, you got to ask yourself, what do you really want out of this? You got to justify that purchase. So hopefully that was helpful for you all. Um, if you have any more questions, like as always, you know, leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer it. If you like my content, as always, help me out. Click like and subscribe, and I'll I'll keep these videos coming. And I'm looking forward to the next one. So I'll see you all later.